to eat so we won't keep you very long but the whole reason for the season is Jesus Amen. 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 Jesus who loves to hear of the coming of the birth of a child Amen. or the birth of a child didn't we get so excited when we heard that Pastor Solitarius and Sister M were going to have little mats oh we got so excited we get so excited Amen well let's read the announcement of the birth of Jesus Christ let's go to Luke chapter 2 and let's read verses 8 to 12. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 12. Praise God. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Praise God. I'm calling this the signs of his coming. Pastor Solitary, if you pray for us. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Thank you, Father, for the announcement, oh God, Amen. that the child is born. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, today, let Amen. your people, oh God, once again, be reminded, oh God, of the wonderful news, oh God, of the birth. Yes. Father in heaven, bless Sister Jane. <laughs> let her mouth, oh God, be an instrument today, oh God. Let your word, oh God, be manifested through her, oh God. I pray for Sister Jean, oh God, that you will make her a mouthpiece today, oh God. And Father, let our understanding be open Amen. today as we listen you, to your Jesus. word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Praise God. So that night of the birth of Jesus on the hills between Bethlehem and Jerusalem, there were shepherds watching over their sheep as they were grazing on the countryside there. And the angel was sent by God to announce the birth of a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. Now, why did the angel appear to these shepherds? These were not ordinary shepherds. And these were not ordinary sheep. Amen. Praise God. Hundreds of sheep were needed daily, monthly, weekly, for the sacrifices in the temple at Jerusalem. Amen. And Bethlehem became the one place in the whole nation where these sheep were kept specifically for the sacrifices in the temple. Mm -hmm. Now on the edge of Bethlehem there was a tower, not a huge tower, just like two floors, upper level, lower level of the tower. Mm -hmm. And this tower was called the Tower of the Flock. A flock is a group of sheep, right? Mm -hmm. This tower was right on the edge of Bethlehem, four miles from Jerusalem. So between this tower and Jerusalem were the sheep that was specifically for sacrifice in the temple at Jerusalem. Amen. The sheep were raised. They were examined. If perfect, had to be a perfect sacrifice. Then that specific group of shepherds would deliver the sheep for the sacrifices in the temple. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, in the lower level of that tower, the newborn little lambs would be born. They would be, raised, they would be examined. Because that group of shepherds were perfect. They knew exactly what they were looking for. They were skilled. They would examine the little newborn sheep. That was a perfect sacrifice. And if the 
there was a perfect lamb that would be fit for sacrifice, those shepherds took long strips of cloth, bound the little lamb, swaddling clothes, they bound that little lamb, put it in a manger to examine it, to see if it was fit for temple sacrifice. They were wrapped up in swaddling bands so they couldn't kick and damage themselves and so it wouldn't be perfect for the sacrifice. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Without these shepherds, there'll be no sacrifices in the temple. Praise God. So, when the angel came and gave the shepherds two signs, that angel said to the shepherds, You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. Well, those shepherds knew there's only one kind of lamb in the whole of the nation that's wrapped in swaddling clothes. The lamb for the temple sacrifice. And when the, when the angel said to the shepherd, is lying in a manger, well, come on, there are mangers in every barn in Bethlehem. Many mangers. The manger is the wooden thing that you put the food in for the animals. Which manger are they going to go to? Right. Amen? But those shepherds knew exactly what the angels were talking about. They said, ah, the tower of the flock, there's a manger. And we know exactly what these angels are talking about. We recognize the sign and we know exactly where to go. And we're going right now. We want to see this newborn baby. We want to see this Savior, praise the Lord. And we're not going to delay. We're going to see him. So the angel's message was well understood by the shepherds. Because they knew exactly what the angels were talking about. In fact... These shepherds had been waiting generations for this sign. Uh -huh. They were waiting. They were waiting for this sign and they understood it. Because the coming birth of Jesus was announced by prophets in the Old Testament. 500 years before Jesus was born, there was a prophet called Micah. And he prophesied in chapter 5, the Savior would be born in Bethlehem. But Micah was more specific than that. In Micah chapter 4, verse 8, if we could go there now, this is what Micah wrote. The exact specific location where the Savior would be born. He said, stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. Hallelujah! The first dominion is talking of the King of Kings, the Lord, the Savior Christ, the Lord. The shepherds understood the prophetic sign. Amen. Amen. Praise uh -huh. God. They were waiting 500 years for this sign. Uh -huh. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. You know, we all have our Christmas traditions. And me, since a child, I always imagined a barn, a manger, and all the animals around. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible, the Bible only says a manger. It doesn't mention a barn and animals, praise God. We have our Christmas traditions. But this Bible, this word of God is true. The word of God is true. Every word in this Bible is true. Hallelujah. 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 The shepherds understood the sign and knew exactly where to go. And it didn't say in the Bible, well, they said, let's have a cup of coffee and think about this. They got up in haste. They got up immediately and in haste they ran to find this newborn king. Praise God. Can we praise God say hallelujah? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. They realized God's giving us a sign. This is the Savior. This is the spotless, sinless sacrifice, the Lamb of God. Amen. Come to take away the sins of the world. Praise God, praise God. How amazing God is. How amazing our God is. But did they really realize who this baby really was? The angel came to Joseph and said, You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. God our Savior. The prophets for the, the Lord God spoke to Isaiah the prophet 700 years before and said, it's written up here, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is, a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This baby was the great I am, 
the creator of all eternity, the mighty God, come to earth, wrapped in the flesh of the body of a baby. Praise God. He was fully God. He was worshipped by wise men and shepherds. He was worshipped, but he was human. He was laid in a manger and was a human just like us. The mighty God, the sacrificial lamb of God. Praise God. Praise God. Aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful? Praise God. Hallelujah. The love of God to take away the sins of the world. More than a Savior. He is God our Savior. He's our Savior. He's your Savior. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Aren't you thankful that God left his throne in glory and came in the body of Jesus and was born to die as a sacrifice for our sins? He, he took on flesh. He was born to die that we might live, that we might be born again of the water of the Spirit and live forever in heaven with him. Oh, that's how much he loves us. He wants us to live in heaven forever with him. He, he didn't have to do all this. He, he's God. He can do anything. He could have said, I'll make myself another group of people who won't sin and won't mess up. But he didn't. He so loved us. He so loved the world. He said, I'm going to come. I'm going to come to this sorrow. I'll take on flesh and die for them so they can live for with me in heaven forever. Oh, praise God. Aren't you thankful? Just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, God spoke to these shepherds in a way they could understand. Mm -hmm. And God speaks to us in a way we can understand. He says, if you seek me, you will find me. If you search for me with all your heart, you will find me. Praise God. Well, there were another group of people who came to worship the newborn king, the wise men. You're the wisest people in Jordan. Amen. You know where to come and celebrate Christmas, amen. You know the best place to be, amen. It's worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Praise God. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we've come to worship him. So God gave the wise men a sign, the sign of a star. Uh -huh. Amen? Because that's what they understood, a star. If God had told them the swaddling clothes in the manger, they wouldn't have understood. But they understood a star. Because apparently these wise men were magi, or wise men. They were the learned, educated men of the day. Astronomers. They studied the movement of the stars. Amen? Don't confuse them with astrologers. Astrologers study the stars because they think the stars run their lives. That's wrong. We don't do that. Amen. But they studied the movement of the stars. Because who created the stars? God. God created the stars. Trillions upon trillions upon trillions of stars. And God put them there for reasons. He gave everyone a name and everyone for a sign. God didn't just throw them out there. God put each one in a specific place for a sign, and each one has a name. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, these wise men were probably descended from the Jews. You know, Pastor Solitarius has been talking about the captivity in Babylon, and King Nebuchadnezzar and the prophet Daniel. Probably these wise men were descended from some Jews in Daniel's day who had been taken in captivity in Babylon, because they came from the east. We don't know where in the east, but they came from the east. And don't confuse tradition again. Tradition says three wise men. The Bible does not say three wise men. The Bible says wise men. We don't know how many wise men. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But we do know these wise men were very wise because they were looking for a king. Amen? Right. Now, what did the sign of the star mean to these wise men? Well, in the book of Numbers, chapter 24, verse 17, 1,000 
500 years before Jesus was born. Imagine, 1,500 years. God already knew before that that he was going to come in Jesus. And we see in Numbers, um, I shall see him but not now. I shall behold him but not now. There shall come a star. This was written 1,500 years before Jesus. Out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. The scepter is the sign of a king. It's that, you know, rod that the king holds. <gasps> wow! A star? Wow! Is the sign of the coming of a great king out of the Jewish nation? That is amazing! And these wise men were so wise, they'd been looking for this sign for thousands of years. And finally that night they saw probably the alignment of three planets and they said, this is this is what we've been waiting for. Come on, guys, let's get ready. Uh -huh. Wow. And they were willing to take the 700-mile journey to follow a star, to worship a king. What are we willing to do when we see everything around us? What are we willing to do to worship the king? Amen? They packed their stuff. They probably had to leave businesses, rearrange their schedules, say goodbye to their families, get their stuff ready, and travel over difficult territory, mountains and lakes and rivers in a way that they'd never known before. And what if the star suddenly disappeared? They were going by faith, following a star. Are we willing to do that to worship our King? Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, you know, we have our tradition again. But this word is true. And we need to search the word of God. Because in our tradition, we have the picture of the shepherds and the wise men all together. Ah. It wasn't like that. The Bible doesn't say that. Amen? Right, right. Apparently, according to the Bible, by the time the wise men got there, Jesus was a young child mm. in a house. Right? right? So, mm. away with that tradition. <laughs> but one thing we know, the wise men worship the king. Ah. Now, they go, they travel, they get to Jerusalem. And where do you imagine a king will be born? Where do you imagine? The palace! So they went to King Herod. Tell us, where's the new king? Well, King Herod was rather wicked. A king? He was only concerned about his position, his power, his authority. He doesn't want a king to take away his position. So he calls the, the, the religious leaders. Religious leaders. Oh, where, tell me, is this new king going to be born? The religious leaders know the prophecies of the Old Testament. Wow. It's not enough to know the Bible. You've got to obey the Bible. Amen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the, the religious leaders said, Oh, Bethlehem, the prophet Micah says he's going to be born in Bethlehem. So wow. King Herod said, Oh, Bethlehem, go worship him. And when you find him, come back and tell me so I can worship him. But he was lying. He was lying. His plan was to kill that child. I don't want anyone taking my authority. And I'm going to kill that child. But God has his way. But the religious leaders, they knew the prophecy. But they weren't willing to travel five miles to Bethlehem to worship the king. These wise men had traveled 700 miles to worship a king and follow a star. Praise God. Church, don't give up. No matter the difficulties, even if the star disappears for a while, whatever you have to go through, worship the King. Worship the King. Worship the King. Amen. Well, we all know when the wise men did not return, King Herod sent his soldiers into Bethlehem and slaughtered, killed all the little baby boys under the age of two. He just wanted to get rid of this. He wanted to kill the plan of God. But no one can kill the plan of God. Because God will have his way. No matter what men say. No matter what the devil tries to do. God will do what he says he will do. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. But we read the wise men filled with joy. They were filled with joy. And they followed the star and they came to the house where Jesus was. They fell down and they presented their gifts, gold for the king of kings, frankincense for our great high priest, and myrrh for his sacrifice, the spotless, sinless lamb of God. 
and they worshipped him. Oh, praise God for that. It's wonderful. Wonderful story, but every word is true. We're celebrating a wonderful event, the first coming of Jesus with church. There's a wake-up call. Because Jesus said, tell them, I'm coming. I'm coming again. I'm coming again. I'm coming again. And we're waiting for the second time he's coming. Not as a baby in a manger, but he's coming as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The King of glory, the Lord of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. One third, one third of this Bible speaks about either his first or second coming. Prophecies of his first coming that came true to every little detail. Every little detail they came true. But church, for every Bible prophecy of his first coming, his birth, life, death and resurrection, there are eight prophecies, eight prophecies about his second coming. The most talked about subject in the whole of the New Testament. The first subject is salvation. The second one is he's coming again. This is so important. He's coming again, church. He's coming again. This is what he's doing. All but four books of the New Testament. All the New Testament, except four books, says he's coming again. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. That where I am. And I'm going to come back. And I'm going to take you to myself. And I'm going to take you to where I am. And you will live with me forever. Jesus said he's coming again. The angels, when Jesus ascended up to heaven, the angels said, this Jesus who has gone into heaven, he will come back in the same way. Hallelujah, Jesus. The apostle Paul spoke 50 times about the second coming of Jesus. James wrote, the coming of the Lord is very near. Peter said, when the chief shepherd appears, you you shall receive a crown of glory. Right. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. In Revelation, Jesus said, Behold, I'm coming. I'm coming quickly. That means I'm on the way. I'm on the way. I'm on the door. I'm coming. I'm coming. And he said, Hold fast what you have. Don't let any man take your reward. Don't let anyone take it away from you. And Jesus also said in Revelation, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. He's coming, church. But who are those who will recognize the sign? And who is he coming to? Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, sorry, 9, verse 28. It says in the book of Hebrews, um, sorry, chapter 9, verse 28, verse 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Now notice this, unto them that look for him, unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time, without sin, unto salvation. Are you looking for him? Are you looking for him? Are you anticipating him? Are you expecting him? Are you looking in the crowd? Is Jesus coming today? Is he coming today? Is he coming today? He's on the way. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. As Pastor Solitarius said in the Philippines, you see the signs of the coming of Christmas. Amen? The Christmas songs and the malls and the decorations and everything. Are we recognizing the signs of his coming? Are we getting ready like we're getting ready for Christmas? We have to be ready, church. We can't miss this second coming. Praise God. The disciples came to Jesus and said, Tell us, Lord, what are the signs of your coming, your second coming? And written in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus said, You will see signs. There are signs, wars, rumors of wars, great earthquakes, diseases, <coughs> earthquakes, great earthquakes, storms, storms at the sea, men's hearts failing them for fear. Distress of nations, don't we see that? People 
not understanding what's going on. We see what's happening in the Middle East all around us. What's happening in this country. We see the mess of politics in the United States. Things we thought we could rely on have now been taken away from us. He's coming soon, church. Any time he could be here. And we need to be ready. We need to be ready. Jesus said, tell my people, I'm coming soon and you must be ready. We don't know the day or the hour, but if he was to come tonight, tomorrow, what would you change in your life? Would you continue to live as the way you are now? What would you change in your life? How many people would you try to reach? Among your families, your friends, your neighbors. What would you do? What would you change in your life if you knew Jesus was coming today? If you knew he was coming tonight? If you knew he was coming tomorrow? The early Christians gave up everything to follow Jesus. They were killed for his sake. They suffered for his sake. They gave up everything because they said, I've got to worship this king. I've got to worship this king. Praise God. Hallelujah. As Paul wrote, he said, the Lord himself should descend from heaven with a shout. Praise God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain on this earth shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, in the clouds, and we will be forever with the Lord. We don't know when that will take place, but are we ready? that one day we could be walking along and all of a sudden our feet are no longer touching the ground but we find ourselves rising in the air to be born in the clouds of heaven. Praise God, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Lord told a parable of the ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. The five foolish ones let the oil and the wine in the oil in their lamp, the light of their lamps ran out. And they said to the wise, please give us your oil. Our lamps have gone out. And the wise said, no, we won't have enough. Go buy, go buy for yourself. But while the foolish were away, the king came, the bridegroom came and took the wise ones who were ready and watching and waiting and praying. And he shut the door. The foolish came back. Let us in! Let us in! Let us in! Yeah. Depart from me, I don't know you. You were not ready for me when I came. You knew the signs, but you did not do anything about it. We need to be ready, church. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. Because I want to see that glorious place that he has prepared for us. A glorious city. Streets of gold. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more dying, no more crying. Amen. Amen. And we will see all of our friends and relatives who have gone to heaven already before us. But the most important thing, I want to see him. I want to see the one who loves me. I want to see the one who died for me. I want to see the one who shed his blood for me. The one who gave his all for me. And I want to worship him. I want to fall down at his feet. And I want to worship him. My King, my Lord, my Savior. I thank you, Lord. I want to see his face. I want to see him in glory. I want to see what he looks like. I just want to see Jesus. I don't deserve any of it. It's not because of anything I've done, but it's for everything. He's done it all. And it's just saying, I love you, my children. Be ready for me when I come. I'm on the way. I'm at the door. Oh, praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. That day when he comes for us who believe, who are ready and waiting, will be the most glorious time of our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But for those who have not obeyed, who are not ready and have let the oil gone out, stop praying, stop coming to church, stop worshipping, stop witnessing, it will be the worst time of their lives. Because when he has taken his church away, on this earth will fall the most dreadful time that he's ever experienced. I don't want to be there. 
And I don't want anyone to be there. Yes. Amen. Amen. We need to be ready, church. Yes. He's coming soon in the clouds of glory to take us to where he is. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Jesus, Jesus. Let's stand. Let's stand. He has given us the signs and he's told us what to do. Amen. He's told us what to do. And we must be ready to meet him in the clouds, in the air when he comes. Praise God. As he said in the book of Revelation, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me. Are you ready? Praise God. The altar here is open. We need to search our hearts and say, Lord, is there anything I need to do? Altering my life or change to make myself ready for your coming. Have I repented of my sins? Am I washed in the blood of the sacrificial lamb of God? Am I filled with that spirit, that spirit that will take me to heaven on the day that you come? Am I ready for your coming, oh God? And here I am. Everyone should be at that altar. Wise men travel 700 miles to worship a king following a star. We know what we are worshipping. We are not following a star. He's here right now. Let all of us come to the altar and worship this king while we have the time. Because time is going to end very soon, church. And we need to worship this king. We need to worship this king. Hallelujah.